So I reckon the key to a successful construction project is obviously planning and it's also getting yourselves organised. So even how you get your timber dropped off, where you get it dropped off, where you're going to cut it, where you're going to mark it, where you're going to stack it. So you can see that I've had Ollie and Ed cutting me sets and packs of rafters here. So there are rafters for different parts of the roof. We've got span one, span two, and span three. Span three is already in, and we're now framing out span one, which is the biggest of the spans. We've got span two framed with some commons and a ridge, um, and now we're gonna do the same on the main span one. But I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about setting out. Now, I've got a ridge here which is 12 meters long from end to end, and yet I don't wanna put it up and have to mark it in situ. I wanna mark all my wall plates out. I wanna know where my dormers are going, where my intermediate rafters are going, where my common rafters are going, and I wanna be able to mark the ridge. So when we put the ridge up, it's already marked. All we're doing then is connecting a rafter at the top at the ridge, a rafter at the bottom at the plate, and in this case, we have an ashlar, so we've got another wall plate going through here. But we want to do all of that on the deck. So let's go up, and I'm going to show you how we do that. So this is a pair of common rafters. These have been set in here. We're going to put another set at the other end and a set in the middle. That will enable me to push my ridge up and get the thing framed at least, you know, like the skeleton of it framed. Now, when it comes to setting out on a job like this, I've got three dormers. Now, those dormers are exactly the same size and obviously in three positions. So I've got one on this elevation, I've got one in the room next door, and I've got one behind me where Andy is over here. And this one here, you can see that I've got the main outside dormer rafters in. Now, I want to set that out once and once only, and the way we do that, just like joinery, is we make a rod. So, here is my dormer rod. So, I've got a centre mark, and then I've got a three-ply mark either side, and the gap in between is for my window. So, on either side of the dormer, I've got a three-ply, so that's three rafters together and two of them will support the frame of the dormer and the other one will catch the battens on the roof. So this dormer was worked out from a window dimension that we had and then what I've done is I've related that to my overall rod. Now this, this rod here is my rafter spacing rod. Now this is just a, a rod which has been set out from here at 450 centres which is what we're using on this job. So. Let's take it really simple. I've got a dormer which is in the centre of this section of wall, plumbed up. So once we found the centre mark, we put our dormer rod on here and we mark our three plies either side. And then what I did is with the other rod, this is the normal rod, this is the roofing rod if you like, I also related that to my rafters. So the dormer, it's no, this is no fluke, but obviously the dormer, we engineer to also work in sync with our rafter spacings in this case. And that's something I do by talking to the engineer or the client and saying, okay, you want a window which is for 1500. If we have a window, because they're gonna be made to measure, if we have a window in this case, which is 1550, say, we can make it all work to rafters, the insulation all works, everything works out on the opposite side of the roof as well. So that's how we do that. So we've got, our, we've got our dormer rod, we've marked our three plies, we've then used our spacing rod to mark all the way down the wall plate. Now what you've got here in front of the wall plate is my ridge board which is going to travel all the way across. This is two pieces and it's been scarfed together and the scarf joint is here and what I've got this at the moment is I've got this just fixed parallel. I can't put it over the plate because the truss is in the way and the rafter on that end. So I've got my wall plate there. I've got my ridge here. This is going to go up, so that's the top of the ridge. So now I'm just going to transfer all of the marks on the plate all the way through over to the ridge. So I'd basically mark them up, square them all round, mark them all. And that enables me to then put the ridge in and just connect the rafter at the top and at the bottom and it's super simple there's no messing around and you try working off a tower scaffold 
or a scaffold and marking all these ridge boards up in situ is just particularly difficult and it's time consuming and it's not that accurate. So that's how we're going to do it. So I'm going to mark this up, get this framed out, ridges in and it should look spectacular. Yeah, so it doesn't take a second to make sure you've got both sides. And sometimes when you're fixing up top, you might find that you're a bit more comfortable looking from one side than you are from the other. You know, to start with a right hand fixing, if you've got one mark, you think, oh, I wish I could hold it. You might be wanting to pull it. So I just think that for the sake of a second or two, it really just makes it a little bit more, I say it takes no time at all, but all of this little bit of prep here now gives us this really nice, you know, datums everywhere. I mean, you know, when you, I mean, this is a 10 inch, sorry, a nine, a nine inch timber. So it's a two, two, five. And also, you know, you really struggle with a, a speed square on something like this because you're not getting enough shoulder. You get a little bit of, whereas with a framing square, this is what it's always intended for, obviously get a lovely job. So I'm going to finish off marking the ridge all the way through and get some of this together. framed out this part of the roof to a point where we know everything's square, everything's plumb, and from this now we can just work away and fill it all in without any worries. We've marked everything up, we've marked our wall plates up, we've marked our ridge up, nothing gets marked once rafters are in, all the marks are there, because it's particularly difficult to measure between rafters and set things out. Now we've also got an ashlar wall here, now this is a structural ashlar wall as opposed to some of the other ones that we've got going in later on which are purely to you know reduce the size of the triangle in the room they're not load bearing at all and they can go in after the insulation and everything else so what we've got here is a 200 millimeter stud wall so it's an eight by two wall we've marked the ashlar out and what we do here now is we pull him up and we fix this head plate in and we'll put some props underneath it to keep it nice and true now, we could build a wall and then try and bird's mouth these over the top, but with my app, I'm able to position the bird's mouths on the app. It will tell me how far up the rafter to cut it. Now, um, i tell you what, could you get the end of that and we'll screw this up. Let's get a little drill. So, um, come onto this one, we'll do this one first. So, which is number, yeah. So, we're gonna lift it straight up and in. So for now, if you just lift it straight up and in, and I'll get the one nearest to me. Oh, this is the other, the only trouble of being short, isn't it? I need to get up on something now. Get one in the back there. I'll get one down your end. Hold on a minute. And that's how I set my head plate of my ashlars to make sure that it's all nice and tight and then we'll fill it all in, but we'll start dropping our studs in to this. And it's a really nice way of doing it. If you try to build this first, and your wall plate, in our case, our oak, has got a tiny little hump in the middle, it means it will sit your rafters up here, whereas we want them to be nice and true. And this is always a really nice, easy way of doing it. So we're just getting the ashlar wall all built through now. So the guys are just putting in some intermediate studs. This will just keep everything exactly true where we want it. So we're just going underneath each of the setting out rafters that we've got. It's going to be absolutely spot on. And it's all done from the measure. We hardly level anything because the geometry is always perfect. So there's the ashlar going in. They're just putting a few more studs in. And once that's in, that eliminates any of this oak pushing or moving because of 
the loads coming through the roof as we're walking around building it and all the rest of it. So that's pretty good. The guys are just going to chop that off now. So this is our unpegged scarf joint, but you can see that the principle, if I pull that, will go like that. And then the pegs, as it comes through, will tighten it all up. And that's basically the principle of the scarf joint, all pre-marked where we want our ridges to go. So we will also have a mechanical fixing in here and there. Let me turn around the right way. That's better, isn't it? Hey? So that's the folding wedges. That's where they go, they pull through there, and obviously, as you knock them in, it pushes one joint that way to the shoulder, and one joint that way. I think this is one of the most satisfying pieces of timber work one can do in carpentry. And I know you've probably seen it before, but how we work it out, the joint length is three times the height of the timber that you're joining, 225 here, so that's 775 long. And then we run this, let me put it this way. Then we run this kind of like, well, it's a scarf. This is why it's called a scarf joint. And that's how we end up with that beautiful, strong joint. And then it's a matter of just tapping up. I'll get another hammer. Let me nick one hammer off someone else. Ollie's going to chuck me up his hammer. Cheers, mate. And then it's just a matter of giving him a little tap. and that's probably about enough. And then we just want to make sure that the shoulders stay nice and flush, because all the time you're banging it, it wants to move around. So what I'll do now is I'll just give this a little tease here. That's nice, and here, perfect. And then we'll put a mechanical, a mechanical fixing in as well, here and here. And we end up with a nice, a nice job. What I need to do is I'm going to take the camera and give this job to someone who can do it because I can't because have you seen the height of me right so here we go I'm going to spin you around okay it's all yours bro look he can actually see it and that's absolutely mm. spot on so there's a the scarf joint now we can get some more rafters in and get this, what is like a cathedral roof, done. They always put the agile one up the top. All right then, mate, so I'll pull it out and put it over, yeah? You all set? And you go in. All right. Get your, get your bottom fixed. So we're making excellent progress here on the big build on the roof. We've got what I would say the sort of main frame or skeleton, if you like, roughed in. We've got it all where we know everything needs to be. But before we go too far, we need to get our lattice ridges up. Now, the lattice ridges have been designed in place of a heavy steel or a heavy section of glue lamb, which both are fine, but actually buildability, guys on site, access to lifting equipment, trying to get a genie lift up here, for example, temporary roof, issues with cranes. We're much better off designing a building or structures with elements that we can handle safely on our own. So the lattice ridge 
is going to run all the way directly beneath our structural ridge that we go through there. We've relieved the rafters to allow the lattice to go up through. And there's, here, here are the two lattices that go immediately above my head. So this one here, or this pair here, go in this section. So we're going to pull them in first. And then the long ones underneath go in that section. So on this side, we've got the basis of our gable wall in. It's a very big, strong gable wall. It goes down onto the solid wall. And what we've also got is we've worked out roughly where the bottom of the lattice truss is going to be. So between us, I'm a bit short for this, but between us, once we've lifted it up, we'll slot this in underneath, and that will basically hold it until we've got it secured and fixed. Then we'll take that out and get the next one in, because there's two together, it's a two ply. So let's get on, get that in. Once that's in, then we'll put the head underneath that supports it all, and it'll be perfect. The reason why we can't have that in there at the moment is because it's, it sits on either end, it's too long, and we can't twist it in and go back. Mm -hmm.